Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may truly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passes from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God. As we hear the sacred word and proclaim all that God has done, we can be confident that we shall, be, shall share in Christ's victory over death and live with God forever. May the light of Christ rising in glory vanish from the darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let's say together the Easter Catechal. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels. O universe, dance around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is risen. Sound the victorious trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in glory, revealing the splendor of your creation radiant in the brightness of your triumphant sovereign. Christ has conquered. Now God's life and glory fill you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church. Exult in glory. The risen Savior, our Lord of life, shines upon you. Let all God's people sing and shout for joy. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O God. You've prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, <clears throat> who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The reading from the Acts of the Apostles. No sooner were these words out of Peter's mouth than the Holy Spirit came on listeners. The believing Jesus who had come with Peter couldn't believe it. They couldn't couldn't believe that the Holy Sorry. The believing Jews who had come with Peter couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on outsider, non-Jews. But there it was. They heard them speaking in tongues, heard them praising God. Then Peter said, do I hear any objections to baptizing these friends with water? They received the Holy Spirit exactly as we did. Hearing no objections, he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Psalm 98. Sing to God a brand new song. He's made a world of wonders. He rolled up his sleeves. He set things right. God made history with salvation. He showed the world what he could do. He remembered to love us, a bonus to his dear family, Israel. Indefatigable love. The whole earth comes to attention. Look, God's work of salvation. Shout your praises to God, everybody. Let loose and sing. Strike up the band. Round up an orchestra to play for God. Add on a hundred boys' choir. Feature trumpets and big trombones. Fill the air with praises to King God. Let the sea and its fish give a round of applause, with everything living on earth joining in. Let ocean breakers call out encore, and mountains harmonize the finale. A tribute to God when he comes, when he comes to set the earth right. He'll straighten out the whole world, he'll put the world right, and everyone in it. Reading to John. Every person who believes that Jesus is, in fact, the Messiah, is God's Lord. If we love the one who conceives the child, we'll surely love the child who was conceived. The reality test on whether or not we love God's children is this. Do we love God? Do we keep His commandments? The proof that we love God comes 
when we keep His commandments, and they are not at all troublesome. Every God-born person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. The person who wins out of the world's ways is simply the one who believes Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the divine Christ. He experienced a life-giving birth and a death-killing death. Not only birth from the womb, but baptismal birth of his ministry and sacrificial death. And all the while the Spirit is confirming the truth, the reality of God's presence and Jesus' baptism and crucifixion bring those occasions alive for us. A triple testimony, the Spirit, the baptism, and the crucifixion, and the three in perfect agreement, the Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, I've loved you the way my Father has loved me. Make yourself at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my father's commands and made myself at home in his love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I love you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You're my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. I've made you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. You didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you and I put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives you. But remember the root command, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord God, may only your word be spoken, and may only your word be heard. Amen. Good morning. Please be seated. Seems to have calmed down over in this section of the church. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Helen, we know that's you making trouble over there, so. <laughs> <It's close. laughs> uh, so seven or eight years ago, I was um, in Rome because it was the year of the big um, Paris climate change negotiations. And we knew that Pope Francis was going to be issuing a large statement calling for action on climate change and that it was going to get international media attention. And we wanted to organize an interfaith march into St. Peter's Square to make sure that it got a couple of extra days of media attention as a way to try to wield sort of cultural and political influence. So we went and I, I went and spent several days with a, a colleague or two sort of walking around Rome and figuring out where are we going to march and how's this going to work and that sort of thing. And, and you go to Rome and you like turn one way and you step your toe on a church and you turn another way and you trip over a church. And it's, you know, and so you go into these churches when you're there and they're all, you know, they're all beautiful. I mean, that's not the issue. I mean, they've got deferred maintenance issues for sure, but they're all beautiful, all, you know, priceless artwork, too expensive to insure and all of this kind of thing, you know, and they're all empty, you know. And then you, you know, every once in a while you, you go to a church and, and they're there and they're playing some music that's 350 years old, you know, and they're saying some prayers and, you know, it's moved from Latin into Italian. So that's a step forward, but it's like not with the times. And I, you know, and, and, you know, we were there sort of planning this sort of activist thing and really excited about it. And it went, really, ended up going really, really well. That's a, another story for another time. But you know, I was walking around and, you know, you get after a, and it's hot, you know, and at the end of the day, sort of a, you know, my friend and I, we sat down in, in one of the piazzas is, um, right near the Pantheon and, you know, we're sitting there having a beer and, you know, sort of, you know, you get to the point where, you know, you've seen all of these churches and it's like, okay, they're beautiful and yes, they're lovely and blah, 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 but can someone try something creative at some point? And just at that moment, you were sort of sitting there debriefing at the end of the day. And I hear in this piazza that's sort of crowded with tourists and people running around and stuff like that, 
this electric guitar. And this electric guitar with this Italian, heavy Italian accented guy singing this really fantastic rendition of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> and it was just one of these things where it's like it worked. Because, you know, after hours and hours of nothing but tradition and nothing but the way that it's been for 350 million years and so on and so forth, here's this sort of, you know, marginal looking, you know, 60 year old dude singing Dark Side of the Moon, and it was awesome. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm starting with this story today because the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, it's a, it's a short one, but it's a huge deal in terms of the history of the Christian movement. It really matters because up until then, and even at the time of Jesus's crucifixion and, and resurrection, Christianity was this sort of small rebel movement inside of Judaism. All the Christians were Jews. They were just Jews that were fed up with the, you know, sort of, you know, religious establishment and they wanted to bust a new move and they wanted, you know, they wanted something new, but they were all Jews. And so Peter is sort of out there laying it out. He's in the flow. He's talking about how good, you know, it is to be close to God in this new kind of way. And all of a sudden, these people who aren't Jewish start getting with the program, and they're saying, and they're, they're with it, and they're psyched. And Peter turns to all of the Jewish Christians, the power establishment, he says, I'm saying no to these people. And they're like, no. And so that, and this is a big thing. So it, it, it follows this, is that Peter and Paul have this big fight, because Paul is the sort of uber, you know, sort of hyper-observant Jew who's become a Christian and he's sort of totally set on converting Judaism and so forth and so on. And Peter, Peter and Paul have this like big, they're like arguing. And they're, they're arguing about whether non-Jews should be part of the Christian movement, right? So, you know, here we like get it, it's stupid. <laughs> and they get together and they have this big detente and Paul says, you know what, you're right. And the rest is history. So, if you didn't notice, one of the big themes in the readings this morning is love. I didn't count, but I think it says love at least 15,000 times. And so the message here is that love is new. Love makes new stuff happen. You know, you know when you fall in love, does your life go on the same as it always did? No, it's totally different. When you just, when you really are lit up by something, it's new. You do something different. You think differently. You feel differently. You behave differently. And that's the center of what love and God really is, is this, this sort of amazing newness. And I would suggest that, you know, with the first letter to John, the second reading we've got where it's sort of Jesus, 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 Jesus. I would say is play a, play a word game with yourself. Every place that says Jesus, substitute the real deal. Put the real deal in there and see how it works. It, it's, you know, because what they're saying is if you want to say that you love God, when you see the real deal, you're down with that. You know, and that's what that, you know, and this is, this is the heart of what our faith is, is that God is doing something new. And often it's something that seems really different. And then in retrospect, you get sort of to the point where years later, you're like, how could that have ever been a question? You know, I mean, and this is the, this is the history of the sort of growth of, you know, people in the world sort of figuring out how to love each other. I mean, back in the day, it was like a big deal about should women vote, right? That was a big deal, right? There were people who quoted the Bible up and down saying, no, you know, I would venture to say that we would have a unanimous vote in this church if people said, is that a good idea to have women, right? I mean, this is like, we're in the middle of it now with the trans stuff and the LGBTQ stuff around the world. I mean, that's what's going on now. Um, anybody want to bet a hundred years from now that there's going to be much question? I mean, I hope that a hundred years from now there's not much question about that. We're in the middle of it now with the environment too. Like people are saying, oh, if you stop producing oil and gas, you're gonna destroy the economy. I mean, come on. You know, that, that's a little bit like, you know, saying, oh, if you go from a horse and buggy to a car, you're gonna put 5 million horses out of work. 
I mean, it just is like this, 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 the march of God through our lives is that we ought to be manifesting and showing new stuff that is more full of life over and over and over again. And that's the, the heart of, that's just, that's just it, really. I mean, there's nothing much more to say except that that's the thing. So remember, whenever you read Jesus, substitute the real deal. And whenever you sort of have been in a church that's too stuck on tradition, think about Pink Floyd. <laughs> that's all you need. That's, that's the secret. That's settled. And do it in your own version, whatever way you do it. You get what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand and say the contemporary creed together. We believe in God the power of life, love, and being that flows through the universe. We believe in Jesus, who revealed the good news of our connectedness with God and with all people, who was compassionate and stood up for justice all the way to the end, who gave people an experience of God by demonstrating this power of life, love, and being. Through his words and example, we believe that we too have this power, the capacity to give people an experience of God by living life fully, loving with our whole heart, and striving to be all we can be. We believe in the communion of saints, who are a people walking together, engaged in the search for meaning and the quest to be connected with the source and sustainer of all that exists. Amen. Friends of the people, we know that when we center our minds and hearts in God's presence among us, extraordinary things happen. Let us pray. May each of us be aware of the Spirit of God within us today and respond to the good news we pray. Amen. Let us pray for world peace. Amen. Let us pray for inner peace. Amen. Let us pray for the abundance of health, for prosperity, and for joy for all. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions within our hearts. For those who may be sick, suffering, or troubled. For the challenges and dangers that we face, I invite you to add your own petitions, either silently or loud. Pray for those suffering in zones of conflict. We lift up these prayers in the belief that we are bonded in God's spirit with everything that exists. We pray for faith and confidence. Amen. We remember anybody that we know who is struggling with illness or any kind of any kind of struggle or challenge. We name those people either silently or loud. And let us, for those of us who are here, and for those of us who are online, let us greet each other in the name of Christ. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Announcements. Susan, anything from your end? No. Nope. I, I remember that. Thank you. I saw it. Yep. Uh, so um, today after church, so with the green light from the executive committee, from the vestry, we're convening a small group that's going to develop some draft plans for the worship service and for the sanctuary and how we want to think about doing that moving into the future. That small group is going to meet a couple of times and bring a proposal, some recommendations to the executive committee, and then for discussion with the entire congregation. So just so that everybody knows, that process is underway or is getting started. Um, we have someone who was quite frightened at the beginning of the service <laughs> who's celebrating a birthday this week. So maybe we can say happy birthday or sing happy birthday.
walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us, an offering and sacrifice pleasing to God. Please open your lip and every voice and sing hymn books to page 41. five in our service booklet. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Now let us give thanks to God. Our sustainer. All right, we're going to start again. <laughs> All right. Here we go. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. Our sustainer, healer, and redeemer. We give thanks and rejoice that Jesus lived, loved, died, and lives on in God and among those who follow him. We rejoice that Jesus lives as we all will in the reality we call God. We believe that death isn't the end, but rather a transformation into new possibilities. Nothing that exists is ever completely destroyed. A star exploding or a leaf falling, both offer new possibilities and live on in ways unknown to stars and leaves. Winter gives way to spring. What's once lifeless now abounds with life, new possibilities and delights. We too experience new possibilities arising from our failures or disappointments or what has come to an end. We give thanks for all the influences in our lives that have helped us see beyond the present, that have called us to live in hope and trust whatever endings we've experienced. We give thanks for Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, who inspired us to put our hope and trust in life and love. We give thanks for the way he opened our minds and hearts to see and appreciate the deep and never-ending presence of God, who is love. We give thanks for the spirit of new life, active in our lives as it was in the life of Jesus. At this Easter gathering, we take bread as Jesus took bread, and we remember, as Jesus remembered, God's constant presence as we say together the words he said. Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Jesus, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I offer my praise and thanksgiving, and I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. We take wine and drink as Jesus invited his friends to drink, mindful that God is love and trust, 
as we say together the words he said. Drink this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you. Drink this to remember me. We believe with Jesus that beyond pain and darkness and death is life unending, fresh new meaning. We believe that God sends a sacred spirit on these gifts that we offer and turns them into God's own body and blood. We break and share this bread as Jesus broke and shared. We share it as our pledge of openness to God in our midst, in acknowledgement of our eternal connection with the spirit of life. Mindful of God's great compassion, let us fill our hearts with compassion towards ourselves and towards all living beings. May all living beings realize that they are kin all nourished from the same source of life. May we ourselves cease to be the cause of suffering to each other. May we live in a way which will not deprive other beings of air, water, food, shelter, or the chance to live. With humility, with awareness of the existence of life and of the sufferings going on around us, let us pray for the establishment of peace and our hearts and on earth. For the journey that life has been, amen. amen. For all that life is for us now, amen. amen. For all that the future holds, amen. amen. And for the mystery of life beyond death, amen. amen. And now, in the words that Jesus taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Let us pray. Precious Savior, out of your abundance you have fed us what we need, sparing none of your good gifts in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Now may we live as you taught us to, open to the depth of your presence in our lives and the lives of all, and ready to follow where you lead. Amen. Let's extend our hands over one another for a final blessing. May we all have the power to live life fully, the grace and passion to love generously, and the courage to be all we can be. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 288.